Hello and welcome to another episode of West Underground. Today we have a comedic legend uh, and, and if you haven't seen him, go see him before he, you know, before he leaves Australia and, and comes back and plays stadiums. But uh, today we have none other than uh, Pat Doherty. I have to be careful there, man, saying your name. I'm scared I'm going to put an extra O just because of the Irish, you know, Celtic sound to it. Mate, you've absolutely nailed it. Don't worry about it. A, a, a seasoned professional like yourself. I'm <laughs> talking about people going overseas. I mean, Trevor Noah is doing such a bad job, dude. You're going to be, you're going to be in this spot next. I'm telling you right now. Oh man, I appreciate the compliment. And you also, know, you, you, wait, 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 wait. You know that introduction? Yeah. Like, where, yeah, you where, it. Where's, where's, where's my introduction? Jack, haven't I given you like three special introductions? No, I thought no, you were just no, part no, of the team no, now. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't do this. <laughs> Not while we've got company. Don't do this. What do you, what, how do, what would you like me to say, Jack? I am your wife. And you will treat me like that. <laughs> See, I had to become his wife so he can stay in the country. Yeah. We had to get married for the <laughs> visa. Very close to being deported, Pat. An Irishman, can, like you, an Irishman like you would understand. I, I understand fully, but I mean, having only just met you just before we started recording, I can I can firmly say that the Australian government did the wrong thing by letting you stay here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it hurts because it's so true. <laughs> no, where, where are you from? Are you are you a, a Liverpudlian? Yeah, I am, man. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. Mate. It's uh, you, Paddy Pimlet. Um, who else is who else is from there? I'm a, I'm a big UFC fan. Yeah, um, uh, I know I know so Paddy. I know Paddy the Baddy. Personally, or just no, like I, yeah, I've met him a few times. <laughs> that's a, that's all I'm willing to share on that one. But yeah, he's a, good lad. he's a good lad, Paddy. <laughs> there is something. It's it. You all just sound like the biggest. And my really good uh, friend is a comedian as well. His name's Carl Legacy. He's in the well. He's performs all around Australia. He um. He's got. He's a scouser as well. And uh, oh really? You, yeah. You just, yeah. And it's just like as soon as you hear a scouser accent, you say you're at the pub and you hear a scouser accent, you're going like, all right. Well, I'm gonna about. I'm about to have the best time. Like. <laughs> Emma, you know what I mean? That's so but if you hear another, if you're another Irish, uh, another English accent, like maybe a posh one or something like that, you're just like, literally, I need to get a pool cue and just smack this bloke yeah, over the front. Yeah. You know? Barkeep, I've been waiting 10 minutes for this drink. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. You do not want to hear that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Pat, what have you been up to, man? Give, give us, give us, uh, give us a Pat Doherty day to day. What's been happening in your life? A Pat Doherty day to day. So this is the thing with the the Zoom calls. You can't tell. I'm I'm a very athletic guy. I mean, mm. I mean, maybe you've heard that before. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know what the word on the street is. But my my regular day to day is uh, probably uh, you know get up, maybe run in the vicinity of like 21 to 25 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one quarter way. I'm a, I'm a quarter of the way through this fake thing that I'm talking about right now. It's very <laughs> insulting. I only got to the run and you all started laughing. <laughs> well, I thought I thought comedian by night, Forrest Gump by day. And I thought you've got the hat to do it. You do? Too, right? like, yeah. When Forrest goes on his long run. That's right, with a little like. hat. <laughs> Yeah, oh, literally, man. you know, you know, he runs across the street. He runs runs across America like nine times. I look like I'm 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 just just about to start that run because I don't have the beard yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm like grows <laughs> out the beard, but I fully do. I think it's the shirt. I think this is an identical shirt to the one that he wore as well. Funnily enough, fuck. Yeah. Well, I I look like Forrest Gump and I have the same IQ as him, so it's like our, our long form podcast usually go that long that you will have a beard by the end of this. Podcast. <laughs> 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 oh man <laughs> oh dude no well i mean to be honest with you i, I in terms of like a, a creative day yeah uh, i i want to i want to continue to lie and tell you that i like I, I sit down and i write jokes for four hours or something like that but on the on the odd occasion that might occur i just generally would sit around and wait for the wait for a gig to you know rear its head up and then just go there make a fool of myself and then come home and just question everything, mate, and then start it all over again. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. But I couldn't imagine that you could write jokes sitting down for four hours, like logging yourself in a room and go, all right, I'm going to write something funny. Like, I feel like you kind of got to be observing the world to do it. Is that right? Like, I don't know. I'm just taking a guess here. 
Mate, I reckon you you definitely do need to go and have some experiences because you need something to talk about. Like that's that's the that's the first part of the gumbo to use that um, um <laughs> forest gum <laughs> keep it on the forest gum thing, you know. Um you gotta I don't know, you gotta go walk around, go sit in a cafe, listen to like the eastern suburbs mums complain about their coffees, mm. like you know, go down to the beach, experience some shit down there. But um then you do need to do some form of writing. And that's, that's the worst and di most difficult part for me usually until recently, my girlfriend got me um, for my birthday. It was my birthday on January 30th. Happy birthday. Me... Happy birthday, Thank you, man. man. Very much. Um, Happy most... birthday. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Go on, carry on, man. <laughs> Dude, that voice is beautiful. It's even when you're singing, it, that's ma. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she got, me, uh, she got me some Ritalin. So I've been able to focus really well for writing jokes. <laughs> Kids, don't like, try this at home. Yeah, but it's because I'm, 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 I'm don't like taking drugs or anything like that, even though I look like I definitely do. Funnily enough, I, mm. I, I don't, but it's like really weak. It's five milligrams of, of Ritalin and it helps me focus. So I can sit down for four hours and just write, which, hey, has, been help, which has been helpful for um, uh, the actual performing, the performing element as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, dude. I just wanted to say, like, have you have you actually like been tested? Like, did your report cards in school? Did they pull your teacher to the side and go, "Fucking hell, Pat's been the clown over there. We think he's got." Have you had him tested for ADHD? <laughs> Mate, I didn't. I didn't. I never got tested, but um, there was the, the teachers always knew there was something wrong for sure. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did your report card say? Like, I don't. I, do you do you remember? Like, did you get class clown? Were you? Oh yeah, for sure. C class clown. You know. I think I think people creative people get this one a lot. It's um would be successful if they applied themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone. You know? My my mother yeah. actually says that about me all the time. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, creative people is just like we are smart, you know, people, and we can and and we're capable. But it's just like so a lot of the time we're sitting around just being like, well, why the fuck do I need to learn about trigonometry? Like, when mm. when am I gonna? I'd I'd much rather just like learn to play a song or like. Or, or learn to tell a joke. I, you know what I mean? It just seems more of like a yeah. practical knowledge. Were you, were, you, were you telling jokes in school? Like, was you, you know, like, so with, with your Irish heritage, like a, a big mm. thing, especially mm. like where I'm from, is joke telling. And you, you're constantly out telling, you know what I mean? It's, it's mm. usually an Irish joke. It's always an Irish joke, right? It's because they're the best. So mm, totally. there's always that thing of, even like it happens now, I work in, in construction and it's, it's that all the time. People trying to outdo yeah. each other, but no one's sitting down and fucking pen it, taking some riddling and penning their own joke. You know what I mean? So in school, like, did, did you kind of have like a one-upmanship? Like, you, because I think funny people tend to have some funny friends. Because oh, for sure. you wouldn't, there's no point being the funniest person in your friend group. Because if, you, if you're the funniest like, what, bloke in a group of like, like, of, of, of a group of just unfunny people was i think that's kind of impossible actually you're right you need to have funny people around you all the time and being irish did i have i'm one of seven kids you know what i mean so like wow was, wow yeah. that, that, no tv in your house <laughs> <laughs> you are Everybody a very a you are you you you, you, you grew up in such a catholic household oh, and i appreciate oh, that <laughs> i love that absolutely fully just repenting all yeah. the time it was lit, dude. It was fucking good. <laughs> so wait, yeah, but, what? That's what it was. And then my friends are just so funny as well. So it's like you stand around with them. And the big thing, I think maybe in construction, you get this as well. I love it. It's like one of my favorite things to do is when people sit around and rag on each other. Mm. It fucking, I love it. And that happened in my family. That happens in my friends all the time. So um, yeah, I maybe, maybe there was like a little inkling for the comedy side of things from there. But dude, can I tell you, actually, I have... I, I have been writing comedy ever since I was a little kid, right? And uh, I remember I was about 14, 14 years old. I had this book, you know, jokes on the on the front of it, jokes. And I had just like discovered the magical art of fucking, of masturbation. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and, jokes and pokes. And so I, was, I was writing like writing jokes about it. And I thought it would be funny to write about like... Um, the I think it was something like um, the practical hand... Uh, the practical... Uh, book to to jerking off or something like that like real for a 14 year old dude it was fucking hilarious right so funny but i had written it all out and then my i went downstairs to get dinner you know and um 
somehow in that process, my sisters had come in and stolen the book <laughs> that I had oh, no. that I had been writing all this shit in. And they saved it, dude. I went back upstairs. I was like, where's the book gone? Where's it? Nobody was saying a fucking thing. The next family event that we have, you know, which is probably on the weekend, they come out with this book. Oh, Pat's been writing in this book. I've loved oh, all Pat's no. And it's the practical kind of masturbation, dude. Without any context for anybody else, they're just like, oh my God, what is wrong with this kid? I like the idea that your old man's going, eh, let, 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 let's have a read of that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it wrong all this time. That's why she yeah, mom totally. keeps getting pregnant. <laughs> Man, so Pat, where did you, where, where did you fall into the seven kids? Like, are you eldest, youngest, middle? What, what, what's going on? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm mid. Uh, so, two, two older brothers, two older yeah. brothers, three younger sisters, one younger brother. Right. Wow. Yeah. 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 What yeah. about you? Are you? Uh, what, what about you two? What, what are we talking here? How many? Am I? Have I absolutely blown the numbers out of the park here? Oh well, I'm one of four, and now Jack. Yeah. There's, there's me and my I've got I'm a younger brother and uh he my older brother is he's funny right and he, he for me he's the funniest person I know right yeah right but he'll the the idea of him ever doing stand up comedy in itself mm. is fucking hilarious so like do you do your siblings do you do you think you're the funniest sibling or have you got someone in your oh, family dude. that cracks you up? The two, the two funniest, if they went head to head, that's what I want to see. The two funniest in my family. In a is, roast battle. Uh, <laughs> a roast battle. But that's not their style. They're not, you, you, it's not their style to roast. They're just like, fuck it. They're really quick. Mm. Um, they say like insane things. It's, it's my younger sister, Millie, and it's my younger other younger sister grace now yeah. i say they couldn't roast because i think like um between sisters if you start roasting each other all of a sudden it's just like clumps of hair are getting pulled out and shit like that you know what i mean but those two are so funny and i but if millie did stand-up comedy i think that she would go from the most um the biggest personality in the room to the smallest personality in the room i don't i don't know why but i is that the same with your older brother you reckon yeah that's interesting man actually isn't it because like i i i for a, for a minute, for a little minute, thought about mm. stand up because I'm a I'm a singer and I kind mm. of have the thought of so it, like I, I you you know all about this a yeah. knobhead says something when you're when you're up there right and oh, yeah. a little, you know that little heckle and mm. I'm always very quick to you know boom bark back. And then, but well, I'm in a room full of people that have came mm. to watch my band, right? It's not totally. like it's not like an open mic night thing, uh, night, ugh, open mic night thing <laughs> where open mic night, just do it. Um, it's not like that. It's you know, it, it, it's it's a gig. We're playing. People are there to see me, right? And the other yeah, people, yeah. and the other people in the band, they get it. They yeah, get it. But mainly you. Too. And so if I respond with something. And people laugh. It's like, oh, so I wanted to see if if I could take that and do stand up because I was kind of like, well, if I could go to a room and make a bunch of strangers who people go into comedy into open mic nights and someone mm. wants to be a smart ass. You you of course. Man, <laughs> I, I love going to watch stand up, right? And there's always yeah. that fucking, you know. It's usually, yeah, yeah. Uh, usually a woman in a in or, a late or, or a middle-aged dude. She's exactly. had a That's she's had a few dude. seltzers, and she's like, "I'm gonna give that knobhead the one I've been thinking about all day." And yeah. then you're <laughs> there, up there, trying to do your job, getting harassed, right? So I, mm. like I say, man, I, I thought about it because, like, me, me and Hamish have had this conversation before. Musicians and comics. Get on very well, and I totally. see I see yeah. Jerry Seinfeld talking about this, and he was like, "It's like we're in, it's like you're chimpanzees uh, and we're gorillas, or you know, vice versa. <laughs> we're, we're baboons, probably." Yeah. Dude, what the hell? You gave yourself gorillas? Uh, uh, 
Well, 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 I I think I think musicians are the better looking ones out of the like out of out of the lot. Yeah, you you have to be funny. You have to be funny. (laughs) I look like Forrest Gump. We've already established that. So I, it's um, you're right. Musicians are definitely the more attractive of the of the two creatives. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Don't no, don't compliments corner. You're a very good looking man. But oh. like what I'm saying is, do you notice that? Because I feel like we we because we we both get up right, and there's people there, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. you're doing something that you know you've rehearsed a little bit for. You, yeah. you, you're trying to get a reaction out of people, and you know, like for me, I, I don't play any instruments because I'm fucking useless. So I stand there with a microphone. Uh-huh. And, you're halfway. And, to, you're halfway there to do it. And stare up. stare out into the abyss. So like I, mm. I I've noticed any comics I ever meet, there's always this like bond because we're not doing the same thing, but it's definitely in the same family, you know. Oh totally, yeah, yeah. dude. It's like it's like in um we're like one of us is in the army, the other one's like in the navy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. We we be the navy. We be the navy. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're going to war. We're bringing we're br- bringing our creativity to the masses. You know what I mean? That's like our that's our, like our weapons of mass destruction. We're just like bringing our songs and jokes to the masses, and we're just doing it in a in a slightly different way. You know? Mm. Um, yeah. But it's funny yeah. that you said that about uh, people that come and watch comedy because I reckon there are two types of audiences in in the comedy sphere right you have the kind of people that come to comedy to see comedy like they'll go to an open mic they just want to see the the process of stand-up comedy you know they want to see people do well they want to see people fail they're just interested in comedy then the second um type of crowd there is is somebody that goes to go and see a comedian like a specific yeah person, yeah yeah you know? Yeah. So they might not know too much about comedy, but they fucking love Neil Kohaka or they fucking love, you know, Billy Darcy or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's funny in those, in those circumstances, in both of those circumstances, when you have a heckler, um, the, the heckler that comes to just see comedy is like a, a smart ass, all that kind of shit. But the audience doesn't hate them straight away. Right. Yeah. Because they want to see the comedians interact with that person. But the heckler that heckles a comedian that everybody has come and seen, they they get like roasted. I mean, Frenchie always puts up videos of um, him absolutely going crazy on him. Yeah, yeah, oh that. man, I've, I love watching those videos. I absolutely <laughs> yeah. love watching watching somebody's, you know, their moment of bravery and get mm. torn a new arsehole for me yeah. is 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 honestly that's my happy place yeah i think they're the my favorite my favorite of all the <laughs> videos that he puts out to be honest at the moment like i i i just i i just love seeing seeing like you know and also like is it hard to be like on your on your toes so far like do you have like some kind of rebuttals that you already have planned like do you have directions which you're gonna gonna try to you know stab them with do you know what i mean I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, I think nine times out of 10, the comedian is always going to like defeat the heckler because the, the, to use, to use like a de- definitive type of terminology, like, because the comedian is coming from doing maybe like, let's say 14 gigs a week, you yeah. know, getting up twice a night, dealing with fucking so many different people doing well, doing badly, getting interrupted, not getting interrupted. You, you understand the playing field. You've done the home games. You've done the away games, whatever. You understand the game. And then that heckler has maybe only come to one comedy show in a month. Maybe. Maybe it's his first comedy show. <laughs> yeah, ever. yeah. It's uh, like the... It's like, so I just want to say, it's like a grasshopper fighting a like a prey mantis, you know? <laughs> yeah, dude. You know that I'd like that. That martial arts reference. I like yeah. that. <laughs> 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 Fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Dude, I mean, this is a classic lead singer of bad en- band energy, you know? Thank you. He's not talking for two seconds and he's calling us nerds. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, I want the attention. Come back. <laughs> it's, it's, in- it's interesting you say that actually about, you know, the heckler and it, it's the one night of comedy. Like, how, mm. how, how long have you actually been doing stand-up for? Like, up on a stage, microphone in hand. Yeah, I reckon um, I... Funnily enough, your your previous comedian uh, uh, guest that you had over here, Billy Darcy. Your predecessor. Um, like, shout out to Billy. Yeah, shout out to Bill. 
he's got the flattest feet in, in Australian comedy, just FII. It's dangerous. And he might have gout, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, anyway, <laughs> he, uh, he and I started on the same day in like 2016, but I was in Sweden, funnily enough. I did my first gig over in Sweden and he was in Sydney. This is his gig. He did it one time when he was 18 and then he took two years off, came back and did it, right? Um, so I've been doing it since then, but like me, the last two, the last two years, it's a mulligan, you know, that doesn't count. Yeah. COVID for stand-up comedy. That's, that's a do-over. Like I've just hit the ball into the water basically because of this yeah. fucking pandemic. I get to pick that up. I get to start again. So I can say that I, I've been doing comedy for technically six years, I guess you would say, but in a practical sense, only four years before yeah. pre-pandemic. Yeah. 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 You you, did you take on, like, I suppose you all had to, didn't you? Like, I, I think, was Andrew Schultz the first one to kind of master, like, the, um, like the, like the Instagram comedy? Like, you know what I mean? Like the, you know, because all you guys are killing it, man. And I, and I love it because this is where you're beating musicians, I think, is, is you guys are so clever on social media and you all work together and you help each other in, like, the communities. And I'm, like, in your, like, inner circles, it's so fucking clever. And I wish the musicians would all come together and take notes because it's genius. It's kind of like social media were, were, is our instruments, if you know yeah. what I mean. Mm. Yeah. And each, pl each platform is completely different. Like, TikTok to Instagram is a fucking completely different game i wouldn't even know dude I've, I've never done a tiktok video in my life i've got a tiktok account but it's just sitting there every time I, i've got like maybe 400 followers now you know how embarrassing that is in my circle of comedian friends to have 400 followers on tiktok mate i i, I got will give will give into the comedy game he used to help set up the kuji comedy night that i oh. used to run yeah. and all of a sudden he's got a million fucking followers on tiktok the, blo the bloke's like the biggest comedian in australia at this point i wish we, I, I, I wish i wish we would have got him on instead <laughs> man, man it's TikTok. you'll get there you'll get there uh, I, I i i don't know how to use oh, that stuff anyway me, dude. that's the one time a heck of one you know what i mean now, anyway, like now we're going to change the subject and talk about your balls, Pat. I, I was so jealous yeah. about you. You put up an Insta post where you where you uh, where you were naked on a building. I thought it was a beach before the interview, but we've I come to realize that it was a building. I'm just yeah. Clarified. Anyway, and uh, I, I I saw that and I thought, fuck me, mate. You must have you must have some balls to get up and do that because just to be naked in public, <laughs> you know. You could see them. <laughs> <laughs> just you know it's so funny i know that i know the uh obviously know the photo that you're talking about on my instagram and uh that uh, the other thing i didn't mention before though was that that was from a photo shoot you know what i mean that was a oh. single photo from multiple photos taken on the, and to give context to everybody that is listening um i'm standing naked on on a rooftop in uh in Potts point you can see the harbor bridge you can see the city skyline behind me and i'm just I'm gently holding my very small um, genitals so you can't see them. But there are photos where I'm fully exposed. And uh, it's only like the day after that you think there, there were so many other apartments around the apartment that I was on the roof of. Yeah, yeah. Did anyone <laughs> see it? Like, did anyone from the ground look up and is like, is that the Beatles? And then it's like, you know, and then it's, it's, it's you up there with full cock out and everything, you know? Mate, mate yeah. if, you, if you put that on TikTok, uh, TikTok that, that, they would be so good. <laughs> you, would have, you would have 10 million followers. I think you just should make the app to TikTok, you know, like that would, that's the next TikTok. revolution. <laughs> Forget OnlyFans. TikTok's the way to go. TikTok, dude. How come nobody, how come like the, the, yeah. That, porn, that, that's porn I feel like Pornhub will be making their own brands of that <laughs> soon. Definitely, dude. <laughs> Mate, we like got to start that now. Stuff. After this podcast, I'm going to get the, the rights to the word. The name yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. Imagine reels for, reels for porn, you know, like you're just scrolling through all the different shit. Like, <laughs> I don't watch it, so I, I wouldn't know. You don't you're watch good porn. Catholic boy, Jack. <laughs> I am porn. No, no, I'd try and stay away from it. Mate, those, those sheets behind you look stiff as a board. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you put it, you know, you know, the, uh, the rapid antigen test and it's got the blue light. 
I'm fucking yeah. terrified to run that through my house, man. <laughs> COVID is the least of yeah. your problems, yeah. brother. <laughs> Blood and semen everywhere. Oh, everywhere. Dude. Everywhere. He did. Yeah, but look, I mean, you've got to get your kid off once in a while. I don't reckon enough people do. You know, do you, yeah. do you boys see a lot of nudity day to day? No, nah, man, because I I'm 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 I think I've hit a like you know I, I I was shredded. I was saying to Jack the other day, like I think I was shredded like till the age of like twenty one, and then like I'm I'm now twenty two. But the last year, man, fuck me. All of a sudden, like I I could drink like ten beers a night for you know a week, and I'd still be the same figure. And now, yeah. now now if I have one, all of a sudden there's this little there's this little tummy hanging over the belt, and you're like, <laughs> where did you come from? You know, so Dude, I. I <laughs> I had pasta three weeks ago and I'm still paying for it. I get it. <laughs> Mate, wait till you turn to the ripe old age of 29. Like if I look at a bagel, I have to go for a 15 kilometer fucking run. It's disgusting. And I still think that I'm a skinny bloke as well. Like, you know, so all my shirts are tight and everything. Mm. So I'll be sitting at the pub all hunched over. My gut's just like poking through the t- people are just going, oh man. He used to run 22 kilometers a morning, that bloke, you know? What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he used to say, he used to say life was like a box of chocolates. Now he just eats them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if you don't do stand-up comedy, it'll be, it'll be criminal, all right? You're coming with me next time we go. Oh, man, when, uh, when, when, when are you next playing? Man, next playing. Um, <laughs> next no, I, I'm, I not, like- I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying I'll, I'll, I just want to come and watch you, man. Yeah, you boys should come. Um, yeah. Will Gibb, funnily enough, runs a comedy club in uh, in Clavelli at the Clavelli Hotel every mm. Tuesday. It's packed. It's absolutely rammed. So that's that'll be my next gig. I'm there every Tuesday. You do that every Tuesday? Oh, man. We're, yeah, yeah. Hamish, we'll yeah, have yeah. to go to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm 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 long- and put, put a mask. We'll, we'll wear masks yeah, yeah. for COVID safety. And they gag me with a mask because oh, I've, totally. I've got two jokes in on them. And here's me thinking I'm Billy fucking Connolly, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know what he's doing? Actually, I know what he's doing, right? What Pat, am I doing? What Pat, am I doing? Pat, Pat is getting us to go. And then he's going to be like, hey, meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking saw straight through my plan, dude. You, you, <laughs> You're a crafty you, you're man. Was, you're a crafty man, you Pat. Up. You can't get one past the scouser, mate. You and Paddy Pimlet. Yeah, you guys <laughs> Wait, Jack, eyes on the back of the head. I re- I reckon before we go, we'll get we'll go to one of the the sex shops and we'll give you the little apple in the mouth. So you go in there and you can't say any words because you've got a fucking apple in the mouth. What do you reckon? Yeah. Funnily enough, in that drawer behind me. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> you boys uh, are absolutely kidding yourselves if you think is, you're uh, I've already, I've already got one. Where did you get that one so quickly? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Just found it. How how many nights a week do you do stand up? Um, before before COVID, I was getting up uh, probably five six times a week. Mm. I reckon. So I would I used to run a couple of comedy comedy clubs. So it was the Coogee Bear Hotel on Mondays, Hive Bar in Erskineville on Tuesdays, and then over in Manly on Wednesdays. Um, and then you would just do other clubs around town Thursday, Friday. And then if you were on a good week, you would go, you know, like Bathurst or, or like a little country town, maybe Wollongong, Newcastle for the weekend mm. and do some gigs yeah. there. It was a good little circuit, mate, you know, but I think it's, it's building back up now, which is exciting. Um, currently, I probably would jump up maybe like a maximum of three times a week. Yeah. But, um, but this is the thing. This is the thing that you sort of touched on before a little bit is uh, that everybody in, in comedy has sort of focused a little bit more on um, on going online, you know, and like doing Instagram stuff, TikTok, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Because rightly so, it's like the amount of years, the first couple of years I was doing stand-up comedy, you'd go to the fucking Lewisham Hotel, you would wait there for three hours, you'd perform to like 19 comedians and two like half-pissed grandmas. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and you were like, God did i make the right choice mm, you know? yeah. <laughs> and then you see these blokes build up their tiktoks and youtubes and they're selling out like the enmore theater you know so it's like yeah. everybody's going yeah i might just miss this open mic tonight and, and and see if i can think of some online content is there any is bit. there any stand-ups who are and this is quite you you'll be putting this on the line don't give me any names right all right right, right, right. i would never unless you want to <laughs> unless you want to right is there anyone who's you're a temptress. I don't know. Great, great on TikTok. TikTok. 
TikTok. Ooh. Is there anyone who's great on that? Oh. Oh. Shit. Shit. I'm going to I'm just going to um, are the you know, like oh, terrible God. comedians because oh, because right in music and we we yeah. had a we had a record producer on uh, who I work with all the time, Michael Carpenter. Give that a watch. That'll be out very soon. It's a very interesting guy, right? And he's yeah. he's put the time in and all that. And he but he said the problem is with the music industry at the minute, there's a lot mm. of people releasing songs and being in studios that have no fucking rights being in studios. Uh, and his really? point kind of is people are releasing songs and they've never went and gigged. They've just right. got this and put it out. And so they've never, they haven't actually mastered it. They've just found a part of it where they can be successful. So cool. is is there anyone you can think of? I'm, I'm, don't give me names because I know in the next green room you're in, you could be Do you bleep them out? And, 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 you, you, probably, you probably asked the, the you know, the biggest big mouth. In, well, in is, is, is there well, a few? Is there a few? Oh, mate, you, it's, it's funny. You, I think you got to keep in mind, like, the, you as the individual, you, uh, especially, I know that I do this. I'm always like, I probably deserve a little bit more, you know? Mm. I think yeah, everybody yeah, does yeah, yeah. that. So I, I'm fully aware of that, right? But you do look at some of these, I mean, it's hard. You look at some of the people and you just go, what the fuck? Why are you, what, how do you have that? Why do you have that? That doesn't yeah. make any sense. You have to, then you have to get Buddhist and you have to meditate and you have to realize that it's not important, blah, 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 all that kind of shit. But ultimately there are some comedians that pop off on TikTok and I look at their stuff and I go, holy crap, that's fucking funny as, you know? And then I'm on the lineup with them and they may as well have just done like a TED talk about fucking, you know, colon cancer. Cause it's like, <laughs> uh, the description, <laughs> the description for that video will be at the end. <laughs> it's just a link to my TED talk. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, look, there, there is a couple of, but I mean, what are you going to do? It's um. well, that's your smoke break, like isn't it? Say again. Like when you when when that's happening at the club and you and you're seeing them giving the TED talk, that's when all you guys go out for a smoke break or go outside and get some fresh air and then come in, you know, 50 minutes later and you know that's when the show oh, begins. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I, I don't want to I don't want to be that guy. I, I want to be as supportive as ever since I met my girlfriend that I'm with currently, the beautiful yeah. Emma. She's like such a divine, sweet person no not jaded whatsoever and i've and it's really rubbed off on me in a positive way you know like i've 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 actively become probably about 45 percent less of a cunt because of her maybe and yeah. so i don't wanna, i don't want to rag on these people too hard i I, but, I, uh, I i think you should break up with her for a day and you just you just get it all <laughs> off your chest man get it all off my see chest. pat I, I was in the same boat recently so i know how you feel man like i was in the same boat i you know my my missus uh shout out to chelsea she's uh she's great and and really humbled me, and then then I married this half wit over here, and then and then things have gone south really fast, you know. I am yeah. I am the permanent devil on Hamish's shoulder. <laughs> I can totally see this guy. Is say gonna, it, he, say your, your, it. Your, your wife right here is going to take you for. I have I've seen so many great great men from the Bankstown region just go into the gutter. From their, from, their, <laughs> from their international wives <laughs> yes 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 but this one has his original lips he hasn't got any fillers yet not yet no yet. you won't be able to get rid of him when he does because i mean god he's, he's already a good looking rooster with the, with the sydney reno on him mate he's <laughs> <laughs> how, how long how long have you been with your girlfriend Mate, it's uh, it's probably about a maybe eight months. I yeah. really not that. Long. Yeah, yeah, not that long at all. Um, Man, that must be that must be a funny because you know the way a lot of comedy, I suppose writing songs, I suppose to an extent, is about personal experiences. Is there oh, totally. anything when you're like, she does something, you go, ah, that's gonna kill tonight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. she's like don't All... you don't you fucking say that out there <laughs> don't you say yeah. that there are so many things there are so many things no but she's got such a great sense of humor as well and um 
as do a lot of my friends, if I, uh, I've recently just started doing a new joke about uh, one of my friends and, but I told her as well about mm. it. It's, um, and you'll, you'll see it next Tuesday. I'll do like a little, I'll do a little like tap on the nose just so you know next Tuesday when the new joke's coming out. Um, but uh, uh, she, she was completely cool with me doing it. I don't, I don't like ragging on my friends so much. So I think they're all fine with, uh, with that kind of shit. And if somebody does, if Emma, for example, does something funny or stupid, she says, you're probably going to make a joke about that. And that's fine. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> there's something, it's a resource. You're, you're a resource at some point. You just like, you gotta, you gotta understand that. I'm, I will mine you for comedic material. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should change my medium because all my songs are really depressing. And my girlfriend's Abby, who, who is great and lovely and sweet, and I love her. I have to get that in because you did that before. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, you just jump. Um, you just jump over the train hard. She, uh, she just she'll be, like, these she'll be like, don't, don't really start. Don't sing that. And I'm like, why? She's like, people must think your life is fucking terrible. <laughs> 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 like, when are you? When are you boys? When are you performing next? I've got to come and check it out. Oh, so this this will come out after it, but uh, I'm playing at the Duke of Enmore on Saturday night. On Saturday night. Yeah. All right. But well, I've got I've got plenty of shit coming out. I'll send you I'll send you some dates. Yeah. Send, you should have said you should have said your gig two weeks ago, two weeks ago, or a week ahead, Jack. Just so, and then told him the real date after. So I just go there. No, no, no. So every. <laughs> no, so... Okay, okay. I've got an idea. Hugh, cut this out. Actually, funnily enough, oh no, actually, I fucked that up. Hugh, cut that out too. Man, it was you so to good. You in? It was so good to see you at my gig the other Saturday, wasn't it? No, 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 Mate. I don't mean like that. I said you oh, could okay. have him the future date, like a week, the one you're playing two weeks in advance. So when this comes out, all the listeners would be like, oh, I can go see him this Saturday. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Man, I, you think I know the dates? They tell me. This week you're here and I turn up. <laughs> I turn up as sober hey, as boys, possible. that was the worst improv I've ever been a part of. Just so you know. <laughs> yes, yes, and. Yeah, yeah, yes, and. Yeah. Have you, uh... all right, Hugh, you can remove all that shit. Unless I look good <laughs> in it, then leave it. Have you Have yeah. you ever done any improv before, man? Um, no, not really. But I, I, my comedic style is, is a lot more uh, improv improv on the stage i do love interacting mm. with the crowd and all that kind of stuff do you ever like my best uh person to use as an example of some comedian that i love the most is probably robin williams you know he just oh yeah 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 so in that sense i definitely do a lot of improv i just have those riddle and written jokes in my back pocket to go back to if if i need to you know yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's a good a good idea, man. But do you find it hard to do it, like especially in this climate, to like like I, I think Andrew Schultz is the only one that I see getting away with that kind of stuff where like you can't, there's certain people I, I you know, it, I don't know if there's any like much political correctness in the comedy. I hope not, but um, you know what I mean? Like, did, like, is it hard yeah. to do that shit these days? Cause of that I've, uh, reason? I've, I've never, I've never had a issue. The only I've had an issue with one sort of like, he was probably about a 60 year old bloke recently. Um, and then before that, I haven't had an issue really that, that much later, but, I was ragging on him and he uh, he goes like, he's in the crowd. I said something, he looked like Tony Soprano from The Sopranos, you know, that TV show. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like talking about how like he's a gangster and he's organizing all these different crimes and shit. And uh, and he, he just goes, shut up, mate. Stop fucking talking to me. And, um, and then uh, once he said that, he's giving me two choices, you know? Yeah. Like I, I now have to stop and then look like a huge pussy. Or I double down, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I have to double down, you know? No, like, <laughs> oh, no. This guy, yeah. this guy, he woke up this morning, got himself a gun, and now, and now he's going to get me. Uh, I, res yeah. I respect the shit out of that. I yeah, respect exactly. the shit out of that. Mate, he backed me into a corner, you know? What am I going to do? And, and I only picked him out because he, he spoke to me first, you know what I mean? Like, he came to the fucking. He, he did bring his gun to the to a fucking bazooka fight, and but I, I felt bad because his wife his wife was laughing really hard. Like his, yeah. wife, his wife was just like losing it, and I just saw this guy was just like crumbling around him, you know. Just but um, outside of that, but he also looked rich, so I didn't feel too bad. 
Yeah, all Does right. That, 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 that makes it all better. But but like some like can't you fucking have a laugh at yourself at like your own expense sometimes? Like how fucking big is your ego got to be that you can't laugh at yourself or can't laugh at somebody especially, ripping on you? Especially especially at a comedy show. And especially at the age of sixty, like cheer up, you're gonna be dead soon, buddy. Fucking hell. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> How many years do you reckon he's got in the bag? That's true. Mate, probably less if he doesn't start, you know, taking a joke. Yeah, he's going to have you know, fucking... All that stress. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, look, I haven't, I haven't had too many instances uh, of that kind of stuff. I think, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Like, if you're taking a joke at a comedy club to, to the point where you're going to talk to the comedian, it's like, fucking yeah. grow up, mate. I did not expect this on a comedy <laughs> night. Have you, had, totally. have, you, have you ever had anyone say something like, what time's the comedy starting? Oh, my God. They must be oh. rehearsed. Like, you, you must hear that and go, me. fucking. Yeah. What time's, the, yeah what, time, what, time's the, what time's the comedian on? You know? It's like, I, I'm not a violent man, but I will throw a spear directly <laughs> <laughs> into your chest, you piece of it's shit. Like, it's like the, the Wonderwall joke is, musicians. Um, when you, say again, sorry? It's like it's like when people say like uh, when you're when you're when you're playing a show. Well, you know, for us when we're playing a show and somebody yells out, "Play Wonderwall," it's like the same kind of shit. Like those dirty, like cheap, like you know, insults. It's like, oh man, couldn't think of anything better. Well done, clap clap for you. Yeah, dude, it's it's the same guy. He just goes to all the gigs around Sydney, just yelling out. You know, he's the guy <laughs> from Happy Gilmore. He's like, you're not gonna make this putt, you jackass. And now, <laughs> now it's in Sydney, terrorizing everyone. Yeah, the or, the up. already absolutely like absolutely rattled art industry of, of, yeah. of Sydney. Yeah. This guy's just going. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. Where uh, we 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 spoke on we did a uh, on Monday night fever, mine and Hamish weekly therapy session. I'm gonna call it. Yeah. We we don't oh, edit nice. anything. It's just us it's talk, talking to the moon. But we. We were talking about fuck. I've lost my train of thought. Well, we're confessing. Man. I feel like it's fever. more. Dude, I be more where were we? Where, where were we? Where were we? Oh, talking about hecklers and confession and therapy. I'm gone. I'm, I'm just gonna sit down on the floor. You said. You said. You were talking. Yeah, look, mate. I don't know. You lost me as well. You lost me in those big, beautiful eyes of yours. Felt like anyway, it, the weather felt in Sydney like it was, was interesting. Bit... Hamish, <laughs> hey, Hamish, <laughs> tell Huey he knows what to do. <laughs> Sorry, man. Pat, you've got me flustered. What are you talking about? He's a good looking you're big, man. sexy what? man. Oh, mate, don't do this to me with you. I was looking at your balls up. 20 minutes ago, and now I'm looking at your face. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a, it's a, it's a huge it's a huge. Uh, you should have done it the other way around because that's more impressive. You know what I mean? <laughs> this to that, you'd be like, wow, oh, that's pretty good. Hey, Pat, do you know who Mac DeMarco is? Yeah, I love Mac DeMarco. You've got the cheeky Mac DeMarco smile. You've got the Mac DeMarco, you know, look uh, half halfway from here down. You've got the Mac DeMarco thing going, bro. That is that might be the nicest compliment anybody has ever given me. And yeah, also, yeah. I don't know. You're playing me hot and cold because I was Forrest Gump a second ago. So you well, know, Forrest Gump from the nose up, but from the <laughs> from the nose below. Mac DeMarco, That's the weirdest the transformer of all time, dude. Um, dude, I love Mac DeMarco. He's he's one of those cool guys. I don't see him on social media or or anything like that really that much. But he seems so successful. So I don't know. I don't know how he does it, dude. Is he a personal hero of you, yours in the in the music world? Well, he's a personal hero of mine. That just that he can fit a cigarette between his teeth. I'm I'm always jealous of 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 that factor. And he's just got this like iconic look. And you've got a bit of that oh, going. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it for the audio. Oh, like, We're about to witness yeah. history. Fans. It's to the fans. Oh, oh damn it. I can't. It's too. It's too big. You need a it's roll, man. <laughs> damn it. it's, it's too big. It won't fit. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time it's too big has ever been said in my apartment ever. So. <laughs> it feels weird. <laughs> this face. Oh, uh, yeah. I love Mac DeMarco. Pat, do you, um, do you do the same like do you have the same routine every week or do you change it up like per show do you add new bits in and you keep your classics like the greatest hits oh mate i've got uh, yeah i've got the uh, i've got the i've got the greatest hits that that comes out 
that comes out maybe if I if I'm not too confident in the in the new material, you know, mm. like in the new drop. Um, I might I might bust that out. But what I tend to do, right? Here's a little peek behind the curtain. You want to hear a little peek behind the curtain? Please. Yes, please. All right. A, a, a great comedian once told me this. His name's Matty B. He's uh, he, I think he's down in Wollongong now. But when I was coming up, he was like a headliner in Sydney. And um, I was asking him how to develop material. And, and he reckons what you, what you do is you get, you start with one of your strongest bits. Um, and then you, in the middle, it's called a shit sandwich. Like you start with <laughs> your good bit. In the middle is just the filler. It could be good. It could be bad, but it's all relatively new. So you don't know how it's going to go. And then you close out with something solid, right? Because then the crowd will always remember you like on that last bit. They'll be like, oh yeah, look at that. He was actually pretty good, you know? And then from there, you have to record it and you listen back and you go, oh, that second joke I told was fucking sick. I'll keep that in. That third one wasn't any good. I'll drop that. That fourth one was good. I'll keep that. And then hopefully like within six months, you've got half an hour of material that you yeah, can yeah. take anywhere. And then, cause that's the thing. You develop the stuff in the clubs here in Sydney and then you sort of aim to just go around Australia touring that material that you've worked on. Do you know what mm. I mean? That's yeah, yeah. technically what you're meant to be doing. So musicians, like we, like if I, if, if, you know, if me, if me or Jack here were to write a song, right. You re record it into our voice memos. And, mm. and then after that, then it's like a process of refinement. It's like going from the sugar cane to the, you know, the processed shit you get in your packets to put in your coffee, you know, yeah. but at the end you get that, you know, that polished white, you know, glorious sugar and, uh, Ooh, yeah. and, uh, sugar cane to the cocaine we call it. Mm. <laughs> Oh baby, yeah. not me. You guys no. are rock and roll. <laughs> when did you become such a good Christian, Jack? Yeah, in no masturbation, no <laughs> nothing. I am a straight shooter, and uh, <laughs> and and I, I'm just wondering, like, is your process of refinement right? Where we do it in the voice memos or taking it out and like half jamming it at the gigs is that what you have to do like is it like do you have to sometimes like polish a turd into a shit good joke or do you do you know it's kind of good from the start and then it's like six months and it's a fucking banger oh uh, yeah you kind of you kind of know the bones of it would be kind of good you know but then i'm just trying to don't i'm don't think that i'm being distracted i'm just trying to show you something here and but then what you do i've only got two on this one like so when you when you're recording you then you you bring it on stage you bring that idea onto stage yeah mm. can you see that probably not yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you record it. And then when you listen back, you, you start, you get under the, you get under the car, you know what I mean? And you start twisting stuff, tightening it all up, trying it again. It is just a little bit hard because we, we are, we need that crowd to tell us if yeah. it's good or not. You know what I mean? So you can, if you can get two gigs in, in a night, that's perfect. Cause you go in first time, then you listen to the recording and then you tighten it up and then you hit it again for one more time in the night. And then you're sort of, that's good, good enough for the next day. But like, sometimes like where I am right now with comedy, I might do one gig on the Tuesday, then I'm tightening up the screws and I can't tr try it out until, you know, maybe Friday or whatever. So it's a slower process, but I was going to, I was funnily enough, I was going to play you one of these recordings, but I just remember it's just like, it's just sort of like a laugh track. Like yeah, there's just yeah. so much laughter on it. It's probably, you probably wouldn't even, it'd just be too much laughter. I don't know if it would come across well on the podcast. So I might put that away. What, you mean we'd be laughing too much? Or the... Mate, I mean, it's just good material, you know? All it's right, can we hear it? Can we hear stuff. it? You want to hear the good yeah, stuff? Yeah, 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 why not? Fuck it. You and everybody here is going to have to come on Tuesday night, Clavelli Hotel, 7 p.m. Every, every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, and that's called a plug, baby. Yeah, well done. <laughs> well done. We didn't even have to tease you into that. Yeah, no, not, right. not at all. That's it. Um, but yeah, but that's that's sort of like the process, dude. But what's what's the what's the thing in music? Um, because obviously that that sort of what's the thing in music that gets you to continuously come back to it, right? So let me give you an example. In in comedy, once you get that massive laugh, you might get a round of applause. That's the thing that fucking hooks you in, and you yeah. go, "I want to keep doing this." In uh -huh. in in music, what is the what's the equivalent? Well, after the girls, the drugs, the rest of the lifestyle, I think it just comes down to the. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, 
I, I, I don't know, man. You just love it. I, Jack asked me why music the other day, and I just said because I couldn't really, you know, do, do anything else. My brain, my ADHD brain, is just became obsessed with it and couldn't do anything. You know, it's like I just want to listen to songs. That's what I want to do. It's just that that was that. It, it just stole you. It just, you know. Um, anyway, Jack, what's your opinion on things? I know this sounds very Christian straight shooter again, but happy faces. Yeah. Oh, you don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm all about the money, baby. <laughs> that was so sweet. It's, that uh, was so fucking sweet. it's, I don't know, man. It, uh, like, I, I actually, it's funny you ask that question because I ask that question a lot. You know, like, mm. why comedy? Why music? Like, why is it of anything else in the world that you could be doing? You fucking. Mm you've hooked to that wagon, you know? And for me, it's, it's, I, I don't even know why anymore. O- over lockdown, right? And you, you must have noticed this. I, mm-hmm. I never actually, I, I got to a point where I thought, I've been gigging for nearly 10 years, right? Yeah. And good, bad and indifferent, big crowds, small crowds, <laughs> old man <laughs> shout. You're not gonna make this putt, you jackass! All, all that <laughs> effort, right? but the the thing is, like, I I, I kind of got I got okay with it. It was, uh, you know, if I don't do it again, like I've done it, and then I was happy just recording and you know to be in the studio creating things, and I was like, it's okay, it's okay if I don't do it. And then I played a gig in the Hunter Valley not so long ago. And mm. man, within a minute, I was like, fuck me, have I missed this? Oh my God, it's, dude. It's that, you know, I, I said this to Hamish, and you, you can answer this actually. For me, when I go on stage, for the first 30 seconds, I am not me. I am oh, totally. like a robotic Jack Hughes playing it as cool as he can, right? Mm. And it's not me. It's not me at all. And then by like, my first chorus, I go, oh fuck yeah, I'm in this now, and this is where this is where I live. Do you, do you ever have that? Like, do you, that's, do that's you, so funny you said that because like, on Tuesday night at the gig, imposter syndrome. You go, oh fuck, why am I here? <laughs> oh right, right. Sorry, I didn't. I, I, I know, uh, I know what you're you're talking about there, but I thought you mean like once, yeah, once yeah. you get on stage, action is happening. You're like, you 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 body or your mind hasn't caught up to your body because yeah. sometimes that happens with being yeah. in comedy you know yeah. like i'll just be blah 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 blah, t- chatting 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 and then i'll be up there for like two three minutes and then i'll go oh, okay now i'll start doing you know jokes and stuff rather than interacting with the crowd and whatever and then i'm more present in my body mm. that you know what i mean i thought that that's kind of what you meant but yeah um, no it's a it, 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 double question See, yeah. that- good. I'm getting here, Hamish. I'm asking double I, questions. I, I, one one thing I have to. This is how you know you're a good interviewer because you, you, most people just one question. You yeah. Fucking come not me. Bang. Not me. <laughs> double bubble, baby. So, Pat, is your brain like like manual or automatic in the sense like when you get on when you get on stage, right? When we started this podcast, that was mm. the, you know the first like 31, 30 seconds, one minute is me doing the little acting bit to go. Okay, we're here. i um, my brain has got to shift gears, and uh, it's it's manual trend you know transmission up here. So, but I'm wondering for you, as soon as you get on stage, right? Are you you know the, when you're talking about the mind shift, are you do you do you have to kind of stage it up a little bit for the first like. 30 seconds you know what i mean like just to or maybe the minute and then you're like okay we're, we're, we're now in fifth it's okay no i tell you what's weird dude i think um because i'll transition from the that first part of being on stage uh which will be the sort of improv crowd work element and my mind is definitely on on automatic there for sure but then the the manual the focusing on changing and shifting gears is that's that's the that's the part that's uh when I'm like okay I actually have to work here that's that's when that voice in your head is going at you and telling you stuff to do when you're also saying something completely different do you know what I'm do you yeah know what yeah I'm sort of talking? yeah yeah and then and I get into the second part of doing comedy which is just telling the jokes and again that's automatic as well so it's like it's as as soon as I have to redirect that's when I um it's more manual that's when I'm going like changing all the gears but but initially automatic. And then once I'm everything singing along after the the change of gears, automatic again. 
but yeah, they're, they're, it's just those little moments while you're on stage, I feel that you sort of, your brain, your, uh, your frontal cortex just taps back into the lizard brain. It's like, hey, buddy, we all good in here? We might have to do something, you know? It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then generally your lizard brain is just going, no, nah, mate, we're good. We don't fucking need you, brother. Get out of here, you know? So <laughs> that's kind of my process, I guess, you know? Yeah, did you, yeah. Did, did you did you base yourself on anyone when you were starting out? Like, did you have inspirations, or you were kind of like, I like what they're doing. I, you know, like totally, and, and I take mean, things on. Uh, I, I the, you know what? Um, I was I was wondering if this was going to come up today before doing this. The one thing that I, when I first ever did my first gig, I was wearing a pair of um, Puma suede's you know the, the sneaker nice <laughs> nice and I, I wore that i got i bought those and i was wearing them on stage because eddie murphy used to wear those shoes yeah yeah you know what i mean and i loved eddie murphy eddie murphy to me and dude i reckon to the most comedians was probably the most influential and probably the reason why the most comedians started doing comedy oh well so uh, good, delirious man yeah, and, uh, yeah i, I watched uh, all is raw the one i'm a fucking yeah raw and delirious the purple yeah. suit the red suit the yeah. attitude the jokes the fucking giant stadium of people just going absolutely nuts for him. Like just the confidence, all of it, dude. But I didn't take any of my, um, my, my comedy performance. I didn't, I didn't take any of it, but maybe it was just like the attitude, the confidence. Maybe I took that from Eddie Murphy initially uh, and tried to make that my own. I definitely wanted to look like him, but I'm like a tall, lanky white guy. He's like a, you know, <laughs> built him. Jacked black folk, you know? so there was some problems initially, but I knew that we could wear the same shoes, so that was that was sort of where I tried to meet in the middle. <laughs> well, man, you can probably can you grow the mustache? I just shaved it off two days ago. Oh man, because dude, when you turn twenty nine, you're like, I'm getting old. How do I fucking start making myself look young? Yeah. So you get rid of the facial hair, you know. You get that's kind of. You're doing a good job, man. Like, like you look young. I, I, when you said you're 29, I said, "Fuck off." He's not 29. You know, look at look at you. You look, you're looking. You, you know, I would have thought you're maybe a bit older than me. 20, 25, 26. Thank you. That's younger than Billy Darcy did, so that's good. I'll take that. I don't know, man. That beard's coming in quite thick now, isn't it? Oh yeah, dude. (laughs) The long form beard. This is my long form beard just coming through. Coming in. It's coming in. Have you, do you guys rock a little bit of facial hair? I could, I could see some different little things, a handle, handlebar moustache, something like that. Mm, mm. I, I'm, I'm unable to. Actually, I I was singing when I was about 16. I, I, yeah. you, you'll, you'll know this. You'll This will happen to you. An electric mm. shock from a microphone. Oh, my God. It's pretty good. A little bit of hair under the lip. Man, man. Oh, my yeah. God, right. And <laughs> I, nothing grows there. That if you, if, you, if you were to rub those big, long... Pat out with your fingers across my chin. Baby's bottom. <laughs> baby's bottom. It's the least really got... part of my body. It's just like, whoop, the, slips off. Sometimes up. I'm eating and food just goes, whoop, slips off. <laughs> Nothing goes there. It's so annoying. It's so your girlfriend an... goes to kiss you, just slips off that part. You know yeah. What I mean? Whoops. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you, well, are you look... telling me that the hair got shocked off your, your I face? I think so. Because my, 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 like, my, but my family, we aren't really... You know, we're not good beard growers in my family. You know, uh, you're not a you're not a hairy breed. Nah. Well, at least you can grow we're, a little bit. I we're, good at, do. we're good at public speaking. Well, that's something. Yeah, but that's I'm just fucking good. jealous of both of you. Like, at least you can grow some hair. Like, I had to grow my my hair out here is compensation for the lack of facial hair that I seem to have. I tried to do um, Movember last year, and by the end of it, everyone was like, "I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing." People were November. donating to make you stop. Like they're yeah, like, please don't. Yeah. I'll give you money. Just shave yeah, that you've thing got off. two hairs and they're blonde. Like, bro, relax. And that's where I got. And it was it crushed me, man. I'm tw- I'm 22 and there's still no nothing to shave. Chest hair. You got some chest. You, what, what's the activation looking like? What do you got? I got a little bit, but it's sort of blonde, so you can't really see. Bear, oh my god. Bear, bear, man. I'm still waiting for puberty to kick in. It went you downstairs nothing- and never came up. Only this, this is- <laughs> went downstairs and never came up. That's it. <laughs> I've got, I've got a little bit, but I had oh, like, see, that's oh look at you, I had, I had um, it was, it was so weird. I remember being like eighteen. I, I'm rubbing me nipples here. Yeah. I think I'm lactating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'll stop that now. Um, <laughs> or should I? 
subscribe <laughs> to see more. Um, That's a Patreon. There's, there's like, uh, there's photos of me on holiday with my girlfriend Abby from when we were like 18, and mm. the only hair on me was on my nipples. And it's so fucking strange. No, yeah, dude, I definitely. It's so strange, that. and she used to be like, "Oh, I love that," and I think <laughs> the reason she thought it was if I got rid of it, it might look like. She was babysitting somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the hairy nipples. Especially with this hairless chin of mine, you know? Yeah. Baby, yeah. Baby's, baby's day out. That's what it was trapped. like. From baby's day out. Baby's day out, dude. Yeah, dude. It's, um, it's, that's amazing. The hairy nipple. It's funny because it's, it's a little bit sought after in the male genome like you want you want to have a hairy chest you want to have hairy nipples mm. i think it's underrated in girls like a hairy nipple on a girl is like <laughs> is if, if only if my missus i've been with my missus for nine years right if she had a hairy nipple yeah. we'd be married i'm yeah, just saying exactly. it now i know i think that should be our quest jack was talking the other day about we we want to kind of open up our podcast and get some like snake handlers on some clowns on um and some people that just just do weird jobs, but also like if you're out there and you're a chick with some hairy nips, come on, come on, send us a DM. We'd love to talk to you and just know how we you got to hear the experience. It. Yeah, we got to know what life's like there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, to be honest with you, I didn't expect the interview to like the podcast to come into this territory, but I, I like it here. Like it feels like it's. You're it's welcome. Nice You're welcome. Yeah. But you know, you know, I, I, we never know where this is gonna go. Do you, do you <laughs> reckon that the like? I like it. I was talking to my brother about my brother's doing a podcast, right? And he's like, "Do you ever, do you ever worry that you know this long form thing and you know should be structured? You know, oh, that's the guy who I said could have been a comedian, not that guy. Yeah. He's not that guy anymore. But he, yeah. uh, he he's like, uh, you know, there should be a bit of structure. And I was like. In my mind, and I hope I look at shame. Uh, hate Seamus. Hamish. Sorry, mate. Seamus! Seamus, your dinner's ready! Seamus, get back here now! I look at Hamish, and I think, I hope he knows where I think we're going with this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I gotta say, I gotta say, even over Zoom, sometimes you do, like, this kind of shit over Zoom, and it's so stagnant, and it's so, like, uh, like start-stoppy. You guys must have such good um, te- 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 telop- telepathy. You know the word I'm looking for? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're trying to say. When I'm you're a good just... combo. You're a good combo. Even over Zoom, I can tell that you guys are a good combo. That's why we got married. <laughs> <laughs> and the callback. Okay? That's a comedic technique, my friend. Very well done. Ah, did you not notice that earlier when I, I used one of those with the, with the beard? Man, all yeah. I'm trying to do, Pat, is impress you. I want you to tell everyone. I want you to tell your parents about me. I want you to write about I'm me. Playing games with you. I'm, doing, I'm playing games with you because I knew you did a callback as well and I didn't want to bring it oh, up. He's, <laughs> trapped. <laughs> he's trapped you. I got you there. I knew it. It's just I wanted to, I wanted to know how much you Play silly play. games, yeah. win silly prizes. I like where exactly. we're at. <laughs> Do you um? Do you ever like? I, I, weirdly enough, I'm gonna say yeah. this in, in a lower, lower, lower tone. A lower tone. I was in the shower the other day, and um, I was in the shower washing me hairy nipples, mm. rubbing yep. butter on me hairless chin, praying for that to come in. And um, I was thinking weirdly enough about how with musicians, if we were playing a shit gig. Mm. We could play a Wonderwall, right? We can do a cover. Yeah. You can't just go on and no. tell one of Kevin Hart's jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so funny you say that because I met a comedian from Melbourne one time <clears throat> and he was telling me about how he was doing this corporate gig and it was tanking. Mm. It was just tanking. And he told me that he just started doing like other comedians Others? material and he said that he said it in a way like look how clever i am you know what i mean mm-hmm. but in the, the the comedic book of rules it's just one that you you can't copy other don't, people that's don't steal don't steal other people's don't. jokes amy schumer 
Oh my god, dude. Amy Schumer, I th- yeah. Why the fact that she even still works after the level of thievery that that woman did? Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Mm-hmm. But that said, if she was to offer me a job, I'll take it in a heartbeat. Let's yeah, be honest. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, dude. It's funny. You there, there isn't too many. There's not too many tactics. I mean, there are a couple of tactics that you could employ. One of my favorites. There's this bloke called um, uh, Andrew Wolf. He lives over in Perth. He's probably, in my opinion, one of Australia's best comedians, hands down. So funny. And if the crowd isn't on his side, you just watch him disintegrate and just like create this huge chaotic tornado around him, attacking everybody, attacking himself, going completely off script. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah, Insane. And it just like doing that in a quiet crowd and then just seeing them all like get around him is like one of the it's like a magic trick it's honestly like a magic trick you know what i mean yeah, right. it's wow. just so impressive wow. i mean you got a couple of little things but dude we don't have a wonder wall you're right man that's why that's why comedians are are better than musicians i think is that what you're getting at uh... <laughs> well if you if you're better than us then we're better looking i will take that that that's yeah yeah that's fine that's okay. totally fine dude. you know you so go on, Hamish. I'm sorry, I, my I was going to say, look, me and Jack were having a conversation the other day about our inspiration, like people that we look mm. up to, right? And Russell Brand was on the list, right? I, I started watching Russell Love Brand. Russell. All of a sudden, the next day, I've got six scarves on, right? So it was just like an instant <laughs> effect. I, I, look, um, I, you can't see, but if you ever come over here, there's a billion scarves on the walls and shit like that. There's another billion in there. And it's all because of Russell Brand. Like, the I'm just wondering, like, did you have any influences that kind of came outside of comedy? Um, that's interesting. So Russell Brand affected your your style as a musician, is that what? Yeah, it made me. It made me suddenly want to start puffing up the back of my hair, and it made me suddenly try to try to be try to be a bit flirty with girls, and taught me how to flirt with girls. And uh, totally, you know, a great vocabulary, a bit yeah, more feelings, movements. Yeah, and just suddenly, you know, bringing out, you know, um, my ultimate lexicon, you know, and when I need it, mm. really tapping oh, totally. into that. That's so funny. I, I had my, I had my, um, my Russell Brand improvement moment as well in my life. The jeans got tighter. The, that's when boots started being worn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, shirts. I lost a couple of buttons. Da da da. You know, the hair got more puffy. Absolutely, dude. Oh, I, I have those. I have those pairs. I have those shoes. I'm you have these boots. Right these are very Russell boots. They're very Russell Boots, dude. I put those on. I've all of a sudden got an English accent as well, you know? Like, it's... Uh, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, but... Uh, Hold on. No, 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 no. Let's, let's hear that accent. Let's hear you do Russell Brand. Russell Brand? I don't know. Yeah. I don't do... Russell doesn't come out of me. I just, I go like, I, I all of a sudden go, no, 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 no. Listen here, like... I'm ah! <laughs> it's got me again! <laughs> He, he put the line out. There was a little bit of bait. An old Jack. And you took it hook, line, and sinker, didn't you? Hook, line, ah. and sinker. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, I love you. <laughs> Man, I love you as well. I love you. I love it. <laughs> um, um, yeah, look, you know, in another, in another life, I would have been a scouser for sure. But um, anyway, hang on. I'm getting distracted. I'm sorry, getting distracted sorry, time. sorry. I'm sorry. Um, inspirations inspiration inspiration Uh, nothing is coming to mind straight away maybe just people outside of comedy in my in my regular day-to-day life oh my friend jack star he is uh he's he's actually a musician he used to be the front of this uh, band called swords i don't know it was like i mean fucking that was like eight years ago so i'm not sure if you remember it, but it was a band in the Sydney scene and he was uh, the front man of that band and he was so charismatic and so charming. And I guess I definitely took a little bit of that yeah, yeah. Um, into, mm-hmm. into doing comedy and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of people here and there, maybe somebody like, um, maybe somebody like Michael Caine, you know, Michael, he, Caine. Big, Michael Caine, big influence on my comedy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was J-Lo. not expecting Michael Caine. No, to be fair, I thought you were going to do McConaughey and be like, my inspiration was me in five years. I was actually hoping you would. The thing about, the thing about college girls, 
<laughs> you could do that. That's that's a that's a you you have the whole Matthew McConaughey dazed and confused look going on right now. No, he has Matthew McConaughey and Dallas Buyers Club look going on. No. <laughs> 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 man that's a killer look though yeah. literally, you know what's annoying? literally you know what's fucking annoying that's the third time somebody said that to me is it yeah, <laughs> yeah i was being nice jack fucking hell I, I look like i look like i'm on my, i definitely look like i'm on my way to buy bootleg H, hiv medicine for sure that's that's definitely my vibe mexico <laughs> here we come I'm just on my way to buy a little bit of uh, you know things. That... <laughs> That's quite a good impression. Yeah, that was good. I'm dude. I'm a big fan of McConaughey. I'm a massive. Yeah. Fan. I went out with the, I went out with a girl from Texas for a little while, and she loved Matthew McConaughey. So I was like, okay, I need to sort of work on that. I can't. I'm she 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 would openly talk about how much she liked Matthew McConaughey in front of me. So I'm like, she's clearly not fully invested in this package. Mm. Let me let me get the you know the. AI, uh, the, the install, the Matthew McConaughey install yeah. into the brain. Then I'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're watching How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days every night. Oh, <laughs> dude, I bought Green Book. I brought, I bought Green Lights. Oh, <laughs> great book. Man, I, have, you, have you listened to the audio book? I haven't. I read it like an idiot, oh, but man. I read it with, and his voice was Yeah, I, I, I did the same thing, and then I was like, right, yeah. this. I, it sounds like Morgan Freeman is reading Matthew McConaughey's book, Jack. So let's let's just get the man the audio book. Oh, my God. It's like butter. His voice is like I. I, I, I what are we got here? Hang on. It's right. I got it right here. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Hang on. I'm gonna be able to pull it out for you in one second. What do we got? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? West Underground, where you'll see Pat Doherty pull it out. <laughs> I couldn't find the book, but I got the balls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the balls are out. Yeah, I was gonna that that uh, that um that part that he talks about how his uh mum and dad, uh, his dad came home for dinner, didn't like the food, so his mum just beat the shit out of him, and yeah. as and then he's he started squirting her with the tomato sauce, and then yeah. she started squirting him with the mustard, yeah. and then all of a sudden in front of all the kids they just start making yeah. love, <laughs> and then they start making love right on the kitchen floor, and you're yeah. like, oh my god. But I, yeah. I, because he did a bit of time in Sydney. Did, oh, he came over to Australia for a bit, and his family, did, his family yeah. are Irish. I, his, his background is Irish, and he went through Liverpool actually. Oh, really? You don't know any McConaughey's in a. You, in don't, a know, you don't know a single McConaughey. You don't no. know. He'd be like, he'd be like, oh, they'd be like, all right, all right, all right. That's <laughs> what <they'd be> like. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, look, I'll introduce you to the family, you know what I mean? When when you come around, <laughs> go this territory now. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, maybe I did. I have started wearing uh, my cowboy boots and, um, you know, the boot cut jeans onto stage after nice. I read. So that's that's that for sure. That's the McConaughey influence. Now, honestly, honestly, anyone listening to this, watching this, if you if you haven't read it or, you know, listen to the audio, well, I can do it. It... it it gave me a kind of weird focus with with lockdown mm. because it was a little bit like, you know, tripping over my own feet, smoking a lot of weed, and you know, um, <laughs> you know, not really looking after myself, not really doing anything, you know, no no structure, right. man. Which I think was the same for everyone. But that mm. book, that book is awesome, really good. Yeah, it is. It is a sort of strange novel meets self help. Yeah. Sort of situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Anything that guy could literally tell me to just like go skydiving without a parachute, and I'd be like, it sounds like a fucking good idea, actually. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> he's so convincing. He's just like, I'm just so invested in him. Man, well, don't read David Goggins' book. Next minute, you will be skydiving. Yeah. Funnily enough, somebody got that for me for Christmas, actually. What, what's it? I keep oh. looking over here as if I have these books. Like I could just pan the camera yeah. and it's just yeah, fresh. yeah. You know what you should do? <laughs> like, like for me, you you know, all's behind me is like a, a chest of drawers and a plant, and I'm like, funnily enough, I've got one of those here. Yeah. <laughs> as if you're just reaching out for it and it's gonna appear. Actually, it, our it, editors are a whiz. So if you want, when you say green book, lift your hand yeah. up. Lift your hand up. Yeah. Oh, so green, green book light. will be there. <laughs> green light. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> And then I also read 
David Goggins's book, <laughs> <laughs> which is called um, what was it called? It's like Don't Ever Stop. Yeah, it's look, I'm, I can't remember the title of it, but I listened to the audio book, which is crazy. Mm. It's, it's like Stay Hard, motherfucker. Stay if hard. you want to do it, you'll do it. Get up, run hard. And he's talking about how he'd like. Is he an Irish leprechaun? No, he's like an African American dude, but he's from oh, like yeah. I think he's from the south. But anyway, he's just got this. He's from just Dublin. the way that he talks. He's like <laughs> about like doing push ups and stuff like that, and like doing a doing like ten push ups, stopping, getting down, and doing it, doing it for for an hour until you can't until you can't move anymore, and just do like, it. Do your push ups. Do yeah, your push ups now. And he entered like a super marathon in one part of the book, and he just and he's talking about how he ran till he you know shit was coming down his leg and and like pissing and i'm like dude like that's just so much he's like stay hard motherfuckers and you're like fuck mm. yeah yeah he used to be a navy seal he used to be anything i would hate to be associated with him in any way to be oh. honest you know yeah. just having a person around you they're constantly belittling everything that you're doing and, and nothing would be enough you would be like Mate, this might be good for a motivational book, but as a friend, you're a huge cunt. I can't he's, he's, the only, he's the only celebrity I wouldn't want to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Eat again, motherfucker. Pizza three oh, nights this week, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'd be hiding them from the stories. Yeah? I'd be like, totally. everyone except Dave. Dave's not looking at it. <laughs> have, you got, have, you got some, uh, have you got some big big names following you on the gram? Um, I think we've just got a couple like like Australian musicians and stuff. Oh, like on our our web podcast one or a personal one? Uh, wh whatever. I've got some good ones on my personal. You kidding? Yeah. Who, who would be your dream? Who would be your number one? If somebody could follow you on Instagram, who would it be? Um, Pat Doherty would be quite nice. Oh, I know a guy, man. I know a guy. He's you know a guy. That's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. I am yeah. the guy, man. I am the guy. <laughs> you, uh, you, Hamish. Do, yeah. do you have anyone who you think would be your yours would be Rogan, wouldn't it? <laughs> Fucking one hundred percent. Hey, yours would be Rogan. Totally. I mean, yeah, everybody yeah. would want Rogan to follow you. Yeah, man. Imagine people. having a Rogan following you. It's be the best. You know, like you'd change your life. I got a big American comedian, and I sometimes when I think about like, um, I'm, I'm like, am I going in the right way with stand up comedy? I always remember that this guy follows me on on Instagram, and it makes me feel who, in the who, weirdest way. It feels good. Can we name names. It's Theo Von. You know Theo Von. Oh, oh Theo shit, Von. man. Uh, yeah, I watched his special. Like, yeah, me too. Pick. I love that guy, dude. I fucking love everything about that guy. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 uh, uh, by the way, name drop Clang. Well done, you. Fucking bad. Yeah, not bad. But I was Ooh. gonna say, I was, I was, I was gonna tie it back. Funnily enough, to the thing, I, I, if Matthew McConaughey started following me on Instagram, I would literally, I would, I would, I, d I don't know what I would do. It would be better than set. It would be the best thing in the world. But I, I comment on every one of his photos. I comment the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I always have on every one of his. What, what do you say? Because I, I'm dying. I'm, if we can, Hamish, if we can start like posting every time he does it. Yeah, yeah. We try and like <laughs> totally. we start. We start a petition for McConaughey to get back. Oh to, my Get God. back to Pat. <laughs> it would be if if he fucking started following me back. I'll try and find a little screen grab of, of one of the. I think. Look, it, if, um, if, uh, yeah, all right, all right. Hell yeah, brother. That's what I write. <laughs> <laughs> you keep doing you, boo. I, I love that man, oh. hell, brother. As if he's I, go, I, go, I go hell yeah, and then brother B R U T H A. Oh, oh. Man. hell yeah, brother. You are. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I want to know, Pat. You keep saying like the what I would do if he followed you, but you wouldn't have to do anything if he followed you because he's following you. You know what I mean? You've already got the. You've already, already got, got the cookie. You don't even have to work for it. But what would you do for him to follow you? Um, okay, what would I do? Uh, I would. What would you get down to pray? <laughs> I would. Uh, what would I do? Did I would. Um, what was that fucking? What was that? Before the McConaughey, McConaughey uh, resi um, Renaissance, mm. he put out this one film that was complete dog shit. Oh. And I, I hate to admit it, but uh, I can't. I think it was. I, th I, th th wrong. I think he'd like that if you if you admitted it to. You know, yeah, I, I know. But I would, I, I would actively watch about. all of all of the Matthew McConaughey films, all the bad ones, all the B sides for like a week straight. You know what I mean? 
I would do. There's, there, I tell you, the better question is, what wouldn't I do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. all yeah, in. Nice, nice. Is it fool's gold? <laughs> so, maybe Sahara. Oh, Sahara. Yeah, yeah, that's a sure that's a imagine. fucking awful movie, man. I remember, I remember one day buying the three. You know, you know when you could go to Sanity or JB Hi-Fi back in the day, and you could buy like, oh, yeah. you could spend the same amount to buy one DVD, but you'd get these weird ones where they had like three DVDs in it or five DVDs, like they were like the uh, random oh, yeah, yeah. variety <laughs> packs or variety packs by odd brands making movies. <laughs> and I bought a three pack, and it had Sahara in it, and I was like, man. It's got Matthew McConaughey in it. This was a bargain, right? Put it That's in the, the DVD thing, yeah. player. It was just fucking going, can I have a refund? Like for the first time ever. I know, isn't it nuts? And it, it is annoying because he even had such a, he had such a clout already about him as an actor that anything that he did, you were going, yeah, I'm fully invested. I'm ready to rock and roll, which made it worse when it was bad. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. felt like you got backstabbed by a friend. Um, anyway. <laughs> I, that's what it have you, have you watched that. have you watched true detective uh yeah that, i mean he he crushed that he and then crushed woody that. season two oh. season two was dog shit right yeah but see yeah season two has, oh, it, um, it changes doesn't it yeah yeah it it, it was in it. Yeah. rachel mcadams was in it wasn't she rachel mcadams the guy from wedding crashes the tall one you know vince vaughn uh, vince vaughn was in it it, it was promising because you know these characters these people don't really do that dramatic dark character mm. and then this didn't pan out that well hey so i i want to be i want to be honest with you just during that little matthew mcconaughey chat i just thought of one thing and i gotta ask as musicians what's the best um what's the best venue to play in sydney i know it's a bit out of ba- i'm sorry it was in my brain if i didn't just say it then i would Look. be ignoring the fact that i was thinking about it <laughs> I'll tell you where to really Actually, can I can I can I be honest here and say like the any anyone where you get paid. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. That's a political what statement. About, I know what you're doing. What about exposure? <laughs> oh, don't even, please. The amount of gigs I've done for exposure is fucking insane, especially for companies that have a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. It's, it's painful. Um criminal. I, I don't know. I, I've only played a few places since I've lived in Sydney. There's a place I'd love to play, and that's the State Theatre. Oh my god, that would! I be would incredible. fucking love to play that. Yeah, I'm I'm giving myself two years. If you two play that, Jack, time. you're on the same stage where Prince played. I... Oh, that would be massive. Yeah, you you blew it out. Of, your your goal setting is much higher than mine. I was I was just thinking of like pubs, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no man, I can see you in the state theater. Why the fuck not? Yeah, Why? No, no, no. But, but I haven't played the state theater, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, what but it's you, like, you so. will, you will. I'm gonna you open will. to you. Dude. Let's make each other that promise. You. As I'm shaking hands. Now, who's gonna be opening for who here? <laughs> I'll open for Pat. I'm gonna. Yeah. Okay. I'll, we'll do two. We'll do two nights. A Friday, Saturday. One night. One. I'll, oh I'll yeah. Oh shit, Hamish! This can be the uh, West Underground live show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll have to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, there we go, boys. Now we're fucking putting. This yeah. Oh, the pa- oh, we should. De- so we're we've we've got a we've got a sponsor on the horizon, and we're we're talking about doing some West Underground live shows. And, and um, I think I think you should do it. Yeah, because we've been talking about the like this for a while. We're like, I wish. You know, I wish entertainment would would merge more together and work together more because, like, if we had com- if you had comedians and musicians on the same bill, I don't know, you had you had some, you just got a bunch of random characters, and then at the end of it, you all kind of sit down on a couch and you know you're streaming live and just fucking kick, you know, talk shit. It'd be it'd be totally it'd be, dude. We're not only, together. Yeah, it's not like, only could like you this, sell the story of um. Oh, sorry, go on. Oh, sorry. Not only could you sell. Um, like the tickets of the venue, but you could also sell virtual tickets to that because now you're crossing so many mediums. And it's like, Man, stay theatre. Fuck, could be a year now. Ooh. No, you're involved, Hamish. That. You hairless Is it- bastard. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, I think. Bit. I think it's Hold twelve. On. I think it's twelve hundred. I think thirteen hundred. Maybe, maybe. We can sell out twelve hundred for sure. Are you kidding me? It would be a fucking red hot. But I don't know how much higher is and everything like that. Anyway, that's a bit of a business chat. But the one thing we'll is, get there. The is it's it's the it's the story of Genghis Khan, isn't it? You know, I know you boys, you gentlemen are absolutely history buffs. So I have no doubt about that. Yeah. But Genghis Khan, you know, he's a Mongol. He's he in above China. Above China, and they and then China divided 
the Mongols and the Tartars, you know what I mean? Always yeah. had them constantly fighting each other. Yeah. But then Genghis Khan unified all the Mongols, unified all the Tartars, went down, invaded China. Was You know, he ruled over the largest land empire in, in history. All I'm saying is that we could do that. And where does it start? The state theater. Thank you very much. State theater. Yep. Sometime <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Buy tickets now. We don't know when it is. We could just tell you on Tuesday and it'll be on Tuesday night. We don't know. We're making it up as we go. Pat, Demo. I want to know about your artwork, your painting. Oh, mate, yeah. That's my, that's my other little... Honestly, I, I was having a look through your Instagram and I'm going to... You know, you know what I'm going to start doing? Hell yeah, gonna... brother. <laughs> if you start doing that on my photos, I'll freak out. On <laughs> <laughs> Matthew McConaughey or Jack? Like you, all day, yeah. every day. Thank you. All day, every day. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I've always painted as well. That's the other, that's the other mm. side of me. We talked about Russell Brand before. Another, another person that's similar to him and somebody that was uh, the same sort of creative, kooky wavelength was Noel Fielding. You remember Noel Fielding? Oh, yeah, Noel Fielding. <laughs> Love Noel Fielding, dude. How could you not? But he um. Did you? Were you? Was you? Was you a Mighty Boosh fan? Oh fuck yeah! Dude. Bouncy, bouncy, ooh, such a good time. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. Shoes bouncy. All in a line. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe there's only two seasons of that show. Oh like, man, everybody we've just, loved. We've that just done thing. a crimp. We've just done a crimp. West on the ground first crimp. I'm so happy to do it. We should do it like maybe a weekly crimp. Anyway, um, he he. He was a massive painter as well. I mean, he's still alive. He probably still paints, yeah. right? Um, but I always found that a, as a bit of inspiration. So I had my first exhibition in a while at the start of this month. I've got another one actually coming up on the 28th of April in Newtown at uh, Luna Studio. So you lads got to come across, please. Everybody yeah. listening, you want to good. come and check That's it out. That's a good plug. That's a good plug um, right there. But dude, the, uh, art, doing visual art in a post-lockdown world is so much more chill than doing... Um, stand-up comedy as well because i'm not i don't i i don't i'm not crafting stuff to get one reaction out of you you know mm, yeah. i'm not making jokes just to get laughs i'm making an artwork and however you respond to the artwork you might go this artwork makes me feel sad this artwork makes me feel uh happy i just sit yeah. back and i go yeah that's why that's i painted it like that I yeah, yeah. It, but, you know, you know it, however you react is i can just claim that that's my that was my aim initially so that's fine and it's also Dude, art pays way better than comedy. So that's lovely at the same token. Man, I've got to start selling them then. But yeah, hey, Pat, I just want to ask too. Like, Comedians. I I, I, my, my stream went a second then. I, I, I lost. Sorry. sorry. Uh, I just right. wanted to ask, Pat, um, do you do, like when you when you paint, right, does time fly by so fast? Because I noticed like, oh, you know, I've, I've, I did one recently where, where eight hours gone 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 totally completely there's two there's two um things uh there's two things about that i reckon one with with comedy when you do a gig and probably the same with music maybe i get so fucking amped up it's like yeah. a, it's a full like just a complete up like i just feel high i'm just going like yeah this is the greatest thing i'm going nuts with doing art it's meditation i'm sitting yeah. there i lose time well, I mean, I lose time in both, really, but like, it's a different sensation with painting. It's a much calmer sort of experience. Yeah. It's you can get more people involved. It's, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's a definitely a more chill experience. I love both of them. Though. Don't get me wrong. I really, yeah, yeah. You paint? Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've, I've painted L and drew like all my life. But anyway, I really over like. I don't know, man. Over the last year, I've just gone and really bought some big canvases and just fucking, you know, gone at it. And and I and I and I love it. But I've just look I, at us. Look at us three. We're just fucking creative, just jacking off our creative juices everywhere, aren't we? It's nuts. Well, when you were saying that before, speaking of jacking off, I was kind of like, well, well, music and comedy is kind of like the wank, right? And then when I do art, it's kind of like the the nut, right? Because afterwards I come out and go, fucking like, oh, hell, you know, I. <laughs> I, I <laughs> fucking hell. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I mean, are you coming out feeling like after I've done, after you do a painting session, right? You come out going, oh, you know, like, oh, 
I feel a bit better now. I feel Smoke a bit a cigarette. Better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I get I, I, I um I don't I fully understand that analogy, but I'm really, I'm happy that you took it there. So don't worry about it. <laughs> oh man, look, I don't, it was just a tr train of thought. I was like, either I follow this one or I don't, but what happens if I do? Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But I, um, fun, I, <laughs> I look, man, I love, I, I love it. And do you find yourself to like, uh, the, one thing I want to ask about painting, right? How do mm -hmm. you, how do how do you determine when you stop? Ah, that's interesting. How do you determine when you stop? Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but my mentality is uh, you can never, you can never like undercook a painting. You can definitely overcook one though. Yeah. Um, so if I feel like I have done too much to a particular painting, it's like, fuck, I've got to really reconfigure this thing to get it more simple. But if I keep a painting relatively simple um, and I, I can always add to it in the future if I see the potential for it, if, if I can see that I can add to it in a yeah, positive yeah. way. I always think um, that kids are the best artists, right? Because they don't overanalyze shit. And I try and take that approach to ma making my artwork. One time I used to work at this cafe. It was called, ben it's called um, Boathouse Cafe in Manly. And there was this little kid I was cleaning up the table afterwards and he had done like a drawing on a, on a, on a sheet of stickers and he'd done a drawing over it. And it's still to this day, I've got it somewhere. It's the best piece of art I've ever seen in my life, but the kid didn't think about it, you know, and that's what made the artwork so good. Mm. Yeah. You know? So that's yeah. what I think about art. I'm just like, uh, I think just try and keep it as simple as possible. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really Who's know. Who's your favorite like artist? <laughs> like who, um, who do you who do you like? Because I recently, I've, uh, I, I don't, don't know. I've got into, I've got into art, which has suddenly become a bit mathematical, man. I've got into Escher and this, this world of kind of, you know, um, but, but anyway, you know, um, but before that it was kind of like, uh, I think, I think Jackson Pollock and, and maybe Da Vinci were the mind because I like Da Vinci because he's thinking hundreds of years ahead. And I like Jackson Pollock because he's just wild and, you know, coked out of his mind. And it's like, you know, yeah. spontaneous. Oh, Jackson Pollock. I, I love, uh, what's his name? MC S what is it again? Uh, MC Escher. MC Escher and Da Vinci were always a little bit too, um, sort of like complex for me. I mean, I like I like the look of everything, but like to fully understand it, I don't I, don't, I can't comprehend that deep level of intelligence. I'm nowhere near those that level of genius. Um, That's the point, so though, isn't it? Like I, Hamish said, you know, he's doing things at hundred. He's thinking hundred years ahead. That'll mm, be like totally. so, someone will look at your painting in hundred years and go, "Fuck, he had to figure that." He had to figure yeah, that. People will look back at my artwork and they'll go, this bloke is a Da Vinci. This guy was a definitely Da Vinci level. You know, I know, I know that's what you're saying and I appreciate that immensely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but I like, I like Basque, Jean-Michael yeah. Basque, because every time I say his name, I sound a little fucking clever, you know? Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, and Pablo Picasso. How can you go past Pablo? He's the king. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I love the story of Pablo. He lived, I think he lived until his 90s, right? Like he was mm. quite an old dude, surrounded by young, beautiful women living in a mansion. And um, and he would go out for dinner, these huge dinners. And to pay for the dinner, he would just sign his name on a napkin and give it to the restaurant. And that was enough to pay for the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I want to get to that level. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. I'd like to be Pablo Escobar. <laughs> he used to pay for dinners, massive dinners, and then just pile a giant bit of cocaine on a napkin yeah. and go. Will that do? Will that, that do? Yeah. Will that do? And they're like, you had nine lobsters. And he's like, okay, a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more for you, my friend. <laughs> I'm so jealous of you two with... with, with with the painting and the art and like I fucking if I put a pen to paper mm. or a pencil I'm drawing a cock <laughs> I am I am I am Jonah Hill's character 
in super bad. <laughs> super bad. I'm just drawing a dick. Well, is it a good dick or is Vainy, it a... Vainy triumphant <laughs> motherfucker. Boom. I just can't oh, help it. A... Can't help it. Yeah. Three hairs on each ball. Yeah. A real classic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, to make you feel the OG, better. The OG of no picks. To, to oh, make you feel good. better, Jack, like I remember yesterday I, I said to you, you know, you were complimenting me on fucking making some art and stuff. And I said to you, man, I'm just jealous that you know your left and right. Oh, yeah. Hamish is the part. If you would like to live a long life, it won't be a happy life. Get in the car with mm. Hamish. Because oh, he really? drives like a fucking granny. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's like he's like looking over the steering wheel, like you know, fucking seventy. It's a seventy cruising a thirty-five. People, I can just imagine people honking the horns at him, and he's close. just he's just smiling. The shoulders are around the ears. The music isn't too loud. You know what I mean? It's a lot of focus going on. Well, man, I'm 22 and this is my third car. And I'm like, man, I've learned to chill now. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I had a lot of car crashes in that sort of early 20s of my life as well, actually. I think I, 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 I crashed maybe three, three cars. Two of them were my friends. And it was all just driving too fast. Not drink driving, funnily enough, but just like driving too fast, driving too recklessly. Um, my only so, car crashes uh, have been gigs. <laughs> oh, dude, we're counting those. Yeah, okay. I couldn't. I couldn't get insurance. What, where, where's your worst show? Where's the what's the worst gig? The worst gig that I've ever done. It's pretty. I mean, God, I bombed so many times. I think just as in comedy, you tend to do that. But um, you. One time I did it in Camden. I did this gig in a in a car park, and um, <laughs> it's off to a good and, start. I know. Yeah. I know. And uh, I brought a girl along as well because it was the first gig that I was getting paid for. Um, and I was living in An Annandale at the time in the inner west. So it was an hour and 10 drive probably out there, Camden. And, you know, brought this girl so into her. Um, it was a big crowd, maybe like 80 people or whatever. But we're sitting in this car park. It's fucking weird. I can already tell as soon as we arrive, she's like progressively getting less and less interested in me. The MC goes up. I'm first act off the rank. I go up. I bomb for seven minutes straight in in the middle of my set this one guy stands up and he goes ah, he does the line <laughs> no context Jesus. and he kills he crushes the audience fucking love it including i see the girl that i brought she's loving it as well she's laughing the hardest at that anyway i go for another three minutes get no laughs get off stage I go over to the girl. She's giving me this weird energy now. Like she's like, she's just, it was disgust. Like what I just did disgusted her, which is kind of fair enough. And uh, anyway, just watched the rest of the gig pretty much in silence. Got back in the car, drove an hour and 10 back with her. in complete uh, silence. Dude, you know what you, the only thing I could think of that could have won you over there is if you put your <laughs> finger in the dirt, walked over to him and rubbed his thing and was like, Simba. <laughs> 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 if, if I did that, <laughs> oh Hamish, that was so good. Maybe Hamish good should too. do stand up. I don't know, man. Dude, if I did that, I'd be with that woman now. We'd have two children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd have been in a mass orgy after that. Oh man. People would have been losing the fucking minds. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been mental. He'd have been holding um, you up. Been holding you up. <laughs> Totally, dude. They would have been oh, Savinia, and they would have been holding me, and I would have been going, "I'm the fucking Camden bro. Oh man, <laughs> those those what if moments, eh? That sounds quite nice, King of Camden. You know, it's kind King of, of Camden. almost a little bit of a, be a TV show, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's copyright that too. Yeah, yeah. Copy this is we fucking got some good ideas flying here tonight, guys. I agree, lads. I agree, guys. Anyway. I had a really, I got a, I got a, I had a. a a cracking time meeting you two lads. This has been real fun. This has been so fun, man. It's like time is gone. Man, when I was when I was a guest before the British invasion, as I like to call it, <laughs> before I took over, um, mm. I, when it finished, I remember being like, you know, when you speak to someone and you think, "Fuck, I get on with this person a lot." Totally. And I, and I had that with Hamish, and I don't really have it with you but that's okay because <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly man like, 
I've, 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 I've laid the trap. You laid the trap. I, I haven't had I haven't had the pleasure of you know coming to watch it. And I've seen a lot of the shit, good shit you put on Instagram. And I can't wait to come and have a beer with you and, and watch you, man. Fucking this Tuesday, tell we're there. You, buddy, man. What a fucking this, guy. This is the start of something beautiful, us three. I think. I think this is the start of something really nice. The three stooges. If you, <laughs> if you can make it, if you can make it the Tuesday coming, that would be amazing. But if you can't, you have got to come to one Tuesday, dude. Because I, once you're in the Clavelli, once you're in the eastern suburbs, this little nook, you're, you're under my wing. I'm taking care of you. <laughs> I'm there, man. I'm, I'm there. Right I'm there every Tuesday. Wanna, standing, wanna, standing on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> gonna, I might get a bowl of chips. I might, you know, when we're down at the pub, we can all share that. That would be a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> look, you know. Honestly, I'm, man, th- be... thank you. Thank you so Again, much man, for coming on. Thank you. So thank fun. you so much, man. Mate, no That's worries at all. So the- the aim of the game here is, I think Billy's episode got 490 views on on the on YouTube. This is going to get more. This is going to get more. get more more than that yeah, because 10, I need 20, to that. Yeah, we need to get about 20k. Yeah, that's that can be done. <laughs> if we get 20k, I'm bringing the state theatre to sell out. Yeah, just before, before before we wrap this up, I just want to say, you know, I I think Billy rips a little bit off Liam Gallagher, but that's all right. So do I. We're all guilty of that. I love I love mm. Oasis. Second favorite mm. band. Um, but I, that interview with Billy was a little bit awkward because my cousin is a huge Billy Darcy fan and kind of turned me on to it. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, and, and then he, he joined the interview, but he's got no hair and he's, he, he, and he, he's sitting next to me in my bedroom and he looks like he's my bouncer because he doesn't say much and he wasn't like smiling in between. He's not like sitting there like this. He's sitting there all bald. And I was wondering who that bloke was. Yeah, yeah, he's just a Billy fan, and he got he got all nervous, like a little Mate. baldy head, I'm... baldy body, sat right next to <laughs> yeah, each other. Yeah, it's the genetics of the family, dude. I have such a funny story about um, Billy Darcy's fans. I, I say this all the time. They um, they're not they're not smart, and they're not nice <laughs> to hang out. Sounds <laughs> 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 about right. <laughs> but they I, attend. I like how you've waited attend. two hours to shit on someone by name. <laughs> I publicly, I publicly have a huge disdain towards young Billy Darcy. No, I love the, I love the guy <laughs> so much. We'll probably watch the UFC again th- this weekend at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, his fans are they they come out in in droves, but um, they are some of the dumbest people in this country. So it's it's not. <laughs> Oh, and man. I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'm not saying your cousins. I just realised. No, well, man, you, you, you what are you saying? Right. Is your cousin is a fuckwit. Just, just live for the Hamish. Well, he, Jesus. He, I'm just, I'm just hoping he doesn't hear us. That's the only reason why I'm getting nervous. Is he living in your house? Do you guys live together? Yeah, yeah. We lived, we lived in the room next door. Just wondering how observant he's been because I don't have headphones in. So you know, he hasn't come and knocked on the door yet. Going, oh, oh, what, what? So, so we're in good, you know, good signs. It's so all right. So good. He's, yeah. he's only going to edit this episode, you know, and, uh, and, and there's no, 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 um, no shame against, you know, stupid people. You're probably lovely, but you know, all bald, all bald heads for that matter. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. true. That's very true. That's very, very true. So he, he, he will edit this. So that I didn't realize that. I wish I had that, <laughs> I wish I had that information. Before Whoopsies. I Whoopsies. <laughs> no, he'll love it. He'll love it. <laughs> Mate. It's so funny. I, I opened for Billy a couple of times. And uh, and on his podcast, he's got a big podcast as well. And he's developed me as the character. They call me the snake, right? And so when I when I open for him, people literally go. I'm telling oh, 110 oh, nice. people. Nice, nice. You and know the messages. Go on, man. Sorry. sorry go on. I'll read you. I'll open up my inbox on Instagram yeah. any day of the week, and I'll have a message from from somebody that likes Billy Darcy. I saw one. I got one earlier. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> I uh, hang on a second. Do you want to do them... you you say the name? And then they'll get a... When they're like, right, let's find the guy who always shits on Billy. And then they'll listen to this and then they'll hear you <laughs> saying their name. Can we get a clip? Just yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Jack Hoslin, you piece of shit. I'm just going through the Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're calling him. Fucking poor Jack. Yeah. Sh- Sean Gillies, you're an absolute knob. 
James Sinclair, eat my scrum. You know, these are literally <laughs> people that message me. <laughs> Just like they always message me little snake emojis, and they well, they they say like, "You're a you're a snake. You're a snake dipped in oil." That's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're a slippery snake. Slippery snake. So anyway, so I mean, your cousin's probably been in my in my DMs before, sort of um, just berating me. So it'll be nice nice for him to edit this down. I like the idea that when he edits it, it's your face isn't in it for the entire interview. It's just a big cock <laughs> <laughs> that you drew. <laughs> yeah, that I drew. Yeah, good call, but look at you go. Thank you, you should mate. Do that Thank for you, a living. <laughs> Right, is that is that a pod, Hamish? That's a pod, boys. I think that's it. Pats, God bless you. We'll be God there Tuesday, you, man. We'll be there. Done and done. Um, thanks for having me, fellas. And uh, this is coming out when?